What's being done to repair the damage done by smoking? The World Health Organization warns cigarettes kill millions every year and tobacco causes massive harm to the environment. So what's needed to control the industry? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Hazem Seeker. Seven million people, that's nearly the entire population of Hong Kong. It's also the number of people the World Health Organization says die every year because of cigarettes. The WHO's annual report says the industry is costly to health, the economy and the environment. The report, called Big Tobacco, says discarded cigarette ends and waste contain more than 7,000 toxic chemicals that poison the environment. Cigarette butts account for up to 40% of all litter collected in coastal and urban cleanups. Children don't go to school in tobacco farming areas. 10 to 14% of children in tobacco growing families miss class because they're working in tobacco fields. Tobacco contributes to one in six deaths from non-communicable diseases. Now, the WHO report suggests that taxing cigarettes discourages people from buying them, but that may not always work. An organization called the Regional Tobacco Cessation Program says cigarettes are comparatively very expensive in Austria, but nearly half the population there smokes. That's around 4 million Austrians. And compare that to Russia, where cigarettes are cheap and only 39% of the population smokes. Only 20% of Americans smoke, which is perhaps an example of where taxation does work. Well, the WHO says there are more than 1 billion smokers around the world. Nearly 80% of them are in low- and middle-income countries. So let's bring in our guest now. Joining us from Geneva, Vinayak Mohan Prasad. He leads the WHO Tobacco Free Initiative. And in London, we have Hazel Cheeseman, Director of Policy at Action on Smoking and Health. Good to have you both with us. Uh, so, Vinayak Mohan Prasad, just talk to us about the main findings uh, of this report that the, uh, the World Health Organization has released. Today is World Tobacco Day. Every year, more than 7 million people die from uh, tobacco use. Uh, we, most of us know about the health implications uh, from tobacco and the diseases it causes. But not many people know about the severe economic and environmental consequences from uh, tobacco use. So this year, uh, the, the theme focuses on how tobacco uh, impacts on development, uh, looking at the impact on poverty, looking at the uh, impact on the environment, and other, other economic challenges. More than $1.8 trillion worth of uh, um, uh, resources, 1.8% of the GDP goes into managing health and economic burden from tobacco. On the environmental front, we've released a report today which highlights that the growing of tobacco severely impacts on the cultivation, uh, the crop leads to deforestation, uh, soil degradation, at the time of manufacture, there are a number of emissions which come out which are very harmful to human health. Post-production, at the time of consumption, secondhand smoke is a big issue. More than 900,000 uh, 900, uh, people still die from exposure to secondhand smoke. And then when the cigarette butts and uh, the pouches from smokeless tobacco are all thrown around, they cause a lot of toxic waste spoiling the water bodies. More than 40% of water bodies get uh, severely uh, damaged because of these. So we have tried to document all this with to take forward uh, uh, the, the, the need to bring the tobacco industry to become responsible for the damages which are being caused by uh, tobacco. So you bring up another number of areas there, uh, Vinayak, but talk to us, expand a little bit on the environmental aspect, if, if, if you could, because I think that's uh, one of the most notable things about this report. As you say, many people are well aware of the negative effects of smoking on, on a person's health. Uh, but as far as the environmental damage, and many people would argue there are, there are lots of uh, activities, commercial activities that are harmful to the environment. What, what's what is it in particular about tobacco growing uh, that is, what is the effect that that has on, on the, the, the negative effect that it has on, on the environment? How does it compare with, 
with uh, other commercial activities? So let's take the case of uh, tobacco growing. Uh, the, uh, the amount of water needed, amount of pesticides needed is much higher than many other crops. It already starts to damage the, uh, the soil. Look at the amount of wood which is needed to uh, dry, the cure the tobacco. More than 10 million tons of wood is needed every year. That's almost one tree for every 300 cigarettes, which translates to almost 15 or 20 billion trees being cut. In five years, we are losing 1% of our forest cover. That's a big number we are looking at. Let's look at uh, manufacturing. The amount of emission of carbon dioxide emission at the production stage and at the consumption stage is, is, is tremendous, millions of tons. Who's, who's covering for that? There are voluntary reports from some of the tobacco companies on the uh, emissions, but there are no uh, data being collected by the governments in a systematic manner. Look, I, I mentioned the cigarette butts, for example. More than 40% of the coastal areas, the, if the litter is looked at, it's all from tobacco. So the damages are quite severe, and uh, it has a huge health implication. And that's why WHO has come out with this report. A recent uh, study shows that if the tobacco industry is made to pay for this environmental cost, there will be no profits left for them. Hazel Cheeseman, what do you make of this report and what are the areas that you feel in the, in the work that you do needs the most attention, the most urgent attention? I, I think this report is really timely on World No Tobacco Day to be thinking, you know, about the health impacts of uh, smoking on, on the world, you know, 7 million deaths every year, but also this broader impact on on the economies of, uh, of societies, on the healthcare systems and on the environment. And I think this, this point that you were making about well, there are other commercial activities which have an impact on the environment, and obviously that's true, um, but the commercial activity of the tobacco industry has almost no value to society, in fact less than no value. You know, its commercial activity results in, in deaths, on cost to healthcare systems, on lost productivity. So, you know, this, this is an environmental impact that is not offset by some value elsewhere. Uh, it is uh, just another burden on our global community from um, a product which is killing 7 million people every year. And what are some of the tools, what, what do you believe are the most effective tools then, Hazel Cheeseman, in, in combating uh, smoking and in, in bringing uh, the numbers down? So I think the, the global framework that we have, the Framework Convention on Tobacco Control, sets out clearly um, the steps which we need to take uh, in countries around the world to reduce consumption of tobacco. So taxation is a really, really important um, tool to reduce consumption um, of uh, tobacco products and to reduce the number of people that smoke, uh, making sure that we have a pr proper controls um, on the activities of tobacco companies so they can't market their products to young people and, and draw new, new smokers into the habit. Um, to make sure that we have got support for people to quit smoking around the world. All of these things taken together, uh, along with the, all of the measures set out in the Framework Convention on Tobacco Control, um, are what will bring down um, the global ec epidemic of uh, smoking around the world. Oh, you mentioned uh, taxation as one of the tools. We, we just ran a graphic earlier that showed, uh, gave a few examples of uh, where that's been done in, in a number of countries. Um, and the results have been kind of mixed. I mean, we mentioned Austria, where there is a, a, a quite a high rate of, of, of smoke, uh, where there is um, uh, taxation is, 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 is quite high, and yet lots of people uh, smoke there, quite a high percentage of people smoke there. And when you talk to a lot of smokers as well, they will say, many of them say they'll continue to smoke because it's something that they enjoy doing, and uh, even though the prices continue to go up every year. What, what do you say to that? So I think there's a couple of things there. So first of all, um, taxation doesn't work on its own. It has to be part of, a, of the full package of interventions to help um, reduce smoking rates. So in, in Austria, for example, that might be about controlling the advertising of tobacco products, which is still not as complete as it would be, for example, in the UK. Um, but also, you know, we have really good evidence from around the world that taxation is one of the key levers to reduce consumption. Um, you know, it's been shown in, in, in 
in, in all sorts of different countries that if you can increase the price of tobacco, then consumption will go down. Um, and that also depends on making sure that you are able to control your illicit market as well, so products can't be smuggled in. But if you look at the UK, for example, we have some of the highest rates of taxation on, on tobacco products in the world. We're successfully able to, um, to, to reduce our illicit market over the last few years. Um, and we have some of the fastest falling smoking rates in the world. Vinayak, uh, w w what's your take on that? Is, is taxation the most effective tool? Are there, are there other ways uh, of, of combating this? So we need a whole of government approach and the key measures does include tobacco taxation, excise taxes specifically, but uh, raising awareness, banning smoking in public places, uh, putting warning labels, banning advertisements, all of that need to go together. Taxation is extremely powerful as an instrument. Uh, I'll give the example from Philippines. They raise taxes, they've improved domestic resources by almost $3.9 billion, which are all pl plowed into strengthening universal health coverage. And then the t tobacco usage has started to come down, more than 5% decline. We've been seeing similar trends in many other countries in the world. You mentioned in your report as well, uh, Vinayak, uh, or the, the WHO report, um, saying that the, uh, the self-reported uh, data by uh, tobacco companies is, is limited um, uh, and opaque. They're not, they're not, it's, it's kind of vague. They're not being uh, entirely upfront about it, is, is the suggestion. How do you get tobacco companies to be more transparent? What are some of the, uh, uh, the things that need to be done? So we, the convention, the framework convention on tobacco control does require that the parties to the convention, almost 179, so now 179 countries are parties, plus the European Union, uh, they obligate that we need to protect the environment. Now it's for the countries to take that measure and to agree that we, f we bind the tobacco industry to report. Now in for similarly dangerous products like batteries, for example, they have to manage it, they have to report on it, they have to collect it. You can't just throw out a battery. So why is it a similarly toxic product, the residues in the waste are allowed to be littered and thrown around? The cost, cost of uh, recovery is extremely high uh, for any country. Hazel Cheeseman, um, what, what sort of effect does, does the, uh, um, these campaigns have uh, been shown to have on, on life expectancy? Uh, so we know that uh, people who smoke, in, certainly in the UK, will die 10 years um, earlier than, um, than people that don't smoke. Uh, so where we're able to um, get people to quit smoking, raise the awareness, get people to, to, to stop consuming tobacco, then you know, life expectancy is um, increased. And is, is the government, I mean, the go when the government taxes uh, cigarettes, it's obviously revenue... Uh, for them, isn't it? So that, that this this is kind of a plus side for them. Um, I mean, it could it could get to a point where uh, if too few people are smoking, then that's le that's less that's less rev revenue coming in f uh, for the government. It's it's. Um, I mean, there is that sort of well, so, conflict, isn't it? In Certainly in the UK, taxation of tobacco products is seen as, uh, as a public health intervention, that it, its intention is to reduce the number of people that smoke. And it is a large revenue generator because we still have you know, millions of smokers in the UK. Um, but also there is, a, uh, there is a, an impact of people smoking on the economy. So um, smoking in this country costs society around £12 billion every year, uh, which is far greater than the amount that comes in in terms of tax revenue. So, you know, if over time um, taxation, um, as, as it's been shown to, reduces consumption of tobacco, reduces the number of smokers, there is a net benefit to society of people living longer with less tobacco-related illnesses, having less impact on, on the environment, just as you know, one example, um, that has a kind of net benefit for society as a whole, um, you know, and discount, you know, it, so the loss of tax revenue therefore becomes a bit irrelevant. Vinayak, the cost to society far outweigh uh, any revenue that governments get from, from tax? Yes. So first thing is that very few countries have achieved the level of tax which WHO recommends, 70% of excise on the retail. And the revenues will continue to grow. It's so, in a, it's so addictive as a product. So the experience shows that. Now, we collect $270 billion of uh, tax 
globally if you look at all the num all the countries stacked together. But the, the cost is $1.4 trillion. That's a, that's a huge number compared to what the revenues are being collected. And so I think there is, it's a, it's a no-brainer that the, the cost far exceed the revenue gains even for the government. Well, we're going to broaden this out now, um, talk about the, the, the many therapy programs for quitting smoking um, that are out there suggesting to, tobacco alternatives. They include nicotine patches and nicotine chewing gum. Many doctors say they are useful in the short term, but ineffective long term. There's also e-cigarettes or vapes. The British government suggests that they are 95% less harmful than normal cigarettes. And particularly in the Gulf country, smokers replace cigarettes with shisha, also known as hookah. But a recent study says flavored tobacco has higher concentrations of nicotine and can cause carbon monoxide uh, intoxication. Uh, Hazel Cheeseman, uh, I, I want to get your view on e-cigarettes, first of all. Uh, is, is this a, a step in the right direction, you think? Well, in the UK, uh, you know, we have uh, a full programme of tobacco control interventions. You know, we have taxation, we have smoke-free policy, we have um, support to help people quit smoking, we've got mass media campaigns. And in that context, electronic cigarettes have been another tool in the toolbox um, to get smokers to move away from consuming um, nicotine in its most harmful form, which is combustible tobacco, setting fire to a cigarette and inhaling it to a less harmful way of consuming nicotine through the vapour of electronic cigarettes. And in the UK, we now have 2.9 million people uh, using electronic cigarettes. Uh, and over half of those are people who've completely quit smoking altogether. Uh, we'd like to see people completely switch over so that they are no longer smoking at all because there's no real health benefit unless you completely stop smoking. So for the UK, it's been a useful tool in the toolbox to reduce smoking rates. But I think it's important to emphasise that for us, that's part of a, a comprehensive approach um, to reducing smoking. It's not just one thing that we do. It's part of a whole a, a government approach. Uh, Vinayak, what's, what's your take on, on some of these alternatives, particularly e-cigarettes? So WHO's recommendation to the governments uh, for the last conference of the parties in November was that e-cigarettes uh, need to be regulated and they should continue to be regulated. There's very little evidence that it serves as a quid device. Uh, the uh, youth and women and other vulnerable groups need to be protected. It should not be considered to be a safer alternative. So the evidence base that it is safer is still out there. We, are, we need to still wait to see where the evidence is as a quid device for ends or whether as a, as a safer alternative. It's not safe, it's harmful. So that message needs to go out very clearly that it, it, it is an alternative there, but it would be incorrect to say that it's a safe alternative. So the evidence is still not there. Uh, Hazel Cheeseman, I mean, you talk about some of the, uh, the measures that have been uh, um, enforced in, in the UK on smoking, uh, uh, higher taxes and forcing, uh, forcing the tobacco makers to put label, the warning labels on them and so on. But uh, in many other countries in the world where regulation is, is, is not as strong, uh, it's been found that, uh, that the tobacco companies have been marketing more to, to those countries. It's just kind of a, the low-hanging fruit uh, theory, theory, really. Is that something that concerns you? Oh, absolutely. I mean, in the UK, our market is effectively dark. You know, uh, just this month just gone, we've fully introduced standardised packaging for our tobacco products, so there's no visual branding on our tobacco products. You can't advertise on billboards, on television, or really anywhere. And in that context, it's very difficult for tobacco companies to continue to recruit new smokers. So, of course, they're looking to, to do other markets where regulations are less strict. And the UK government has committed resource to help uh, implement the Framework Convention on Tobacco Control in um, other countries around the world to make sure that we're able to export our expertise uh, in helping to reduce smoking and curb the tobacco industry. Um, at the same time as, as British companies, you know, British American Tobacco is, is exporting um, the tobacco epidemic around the world, it's absolutely uh, incumbent on the UK and the UK government um, to be supporting countries around the world um, to, to prevent the tobacco industry from continuing to recruit new smokers. 
Vinayak, what's the what's the WHO's view on that? I, I mean, this is you're only a, if 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 it's all about combating uh, smoking on at the global level, you're only as strong as 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 your weakest link. There are many countries where uh, these re regulations simply isn't as forced as strongly. So correct. So uh, the where, as regulatory measures get strengthened in many of the developed economies. Tobacco industry has moved to developing economies. And the trend which is showing is the Middle East and African region has an increasing consumption of tobacco. Rest of the countries, it's stabilized. So WHO has uh, two major initiatives. We are looking to control tobacco use in the top 10 high burden. That's about 75% of tobacco use in the world. And then we have a separate Africa program where we, uh, we support Af all the African countries which have made a request to strengthen their capacity to prevent this epidemic even coming in. So we are looking at a twin track approach and we hope to be able to curb the epidemic uh, in, Afri uh, in Africa as well as some of the high burden countries. But how do you, um, just coming back to you then, Hazel, how do you get developed countries uh, to, 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 um, to do more to, to, to combat uh, uh, smoking in, in, the, in the developing areas? Well, I mean, as I say, the UK government has committed to support countries um, around the world uh, to implement the Framework Convention on Tobacco Control. And I think that's completely right that we uh, seek to help uh, other people learn from our experience. I mean, if you think about it, in, in the UK, um, we had a, our first big report on, on what policy we should put in place to reduce smoking in the 1960s. And it's really taken almost until now to fully implement those recommendations, you could argue. Um, so we really don't want it to take decades and decades um, for other countries to be able to, to learn from our experiences. Um, you know, we want to, to, to make sure that we can support those countries out there um, to, to put restrictions in place, to put taxation in place, um, to, to put uh, the warning labels on tobacco products uh, and make sure that um, we can curb the tobacco ep epidemic much more quickly in, in, the, in lower middle income countries um, than, we, than we did in, in, in in the UK and other countries. Vinayak, what, what, what's your view on, on how this report has been received so far and, and, and what do you hope the WHO will, will, will ultimately uh, get out of it? So the first thing is uh, that this report raises awareness amongst other stakeholders, especially the environment groups, and there's a lot of positive response from the governments. We are hoping to use this report to start looking at the economic cost and estimate the burden in the near future. And then hope to create, a, a, a mobilize more support for governments to put extended producers' responsibility on the tobacco industry. That's our ultimate goal. So make them pay for all the environmental damages which is happening from tobacco industry uh, related activities. But the t tobacco companies uh, in many of these countries are, um, are not weak and they have uh, many people uh, working for them, lobbyists and so on in, in the United States, uh, for, for example. I mean, do you have some pretty strong forces that, that you're up against here, aren't you? Yeah, that's true. And, but the governments are committed to firewall all their policy work from the interference from the tobacco industry. And we need to continue to remind the governments and sensitize them from uh, this need to firewall the policy making work from tobacco industry interference. I, uh, that's our job. And uh, we see that commitment when the, uh, the F framework convention on tobacco control, uh, me, uh, the conference of the parties happens once every two years. We see that commitment. So I'm, I'm hopeful that in the coming years, we will g get more support from uh, the countries uh, to push the boundaries to tie down the tobacco industry, to be uh, made responsible for uh, right. their uh, acts. And on that, we're going to have to leave it. Thank very, thanks very much to both of you, uh, Vinayak Mohan Prasad in Geneva and Hazel Cheeseman in London. Thanks very much for being on Inside Story. And thank you, too, for uh, watching. Remember, as always, you can see this program again anytime by visiting our website, aljazeera.com. And for further discussion, go to our Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. You can also join the conversation on Twitter. Our handle there is at 
AJ Inside Story. For me, Hazem Sika and the whole team here, bye for now.